Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with Resurrection of Magneto number three. So as Resurrections, you know, goes, this is pretty much tracking as what we kind of know what happens in these Resurrection episodes. Again, using the Resurrection of Jean Grey as our formula, you know, now in the third issue, we get, of course, the Resurrection, but of course the hero or the you know, protagonist must now make some reconciliations with their past, overcome their final trauma, and then end up going back to the real world, right? So none of the, nothing that happened in this episode, in this issue was really surprising. However, what was so refreshing, what was so exhilarating was the fact that this is not only just the resurrection of Magneto, this is really the evolution of Storm, right? And the way they're able to weave Storm and Eric's kind of journey and evolution as to who they are as a characters now as compared to who they were previously and where and what people expected them I thought was has been was really good right I think that I think Storm's presence in this issue is what really kind of lifts the issue up and just doesn't make it being Magneto crying about all the people he killed or some entity trying to make Magneto feel bad about all the people he killed, or Magneto even, you know, singing the Walter Hawkins song changed the entire issue about how he changed he is, right? Like, you really kind of get to see kind of what it means about making choices, the consequence of your choices, and what it means to be okay with your choices, right? So anyway, so, and I, so that's one of the things I really liked about this issue. Plus, you know, Al Ewing really kind of calls out some of the people who really like to dog on Storm and really, you know, it kind of holds Storm to a standard that they really don't hold other female characters, right? And the fact is, is that every character that we see that we love in X-Men, it should be allowed to evolve, should be allowed to be something more than what they originally were when we first met them. And that is really what we see in, you know, as Storm goes through her journey through this book. So again, I have to say I didn't start off with, I started off with very low expectations for this, for this, for this series. And I have to say it has really kind of exceeded my expectations. I think it should only be a three-part series. I don't think it should have been a four. But, you know, anytime Marvel think, you know, can get into your pockets, they're going to stay into your pockets. So why not make it four episodes, right? Four issues, right? So anyway, so Storm is face-to-face -face with Annihilation, right? So this is the entity that was present during the Genesis War, which, of course, I did not read during X-Men Red. So anyway, so Annihilation is there. But what it really is is the Shadow King showing up in different forms, right? So then they go, she goes from... Uh, annihilation to like four different entities, right? So then Storm's like, oh, it's on and popping, on, it's on and popping. So then they're battling out with the different entities and Eric is looking down at this on like kind of like a chessboard with Charles Xavier, who's also with uh, Shadow King is looking at Charles Xavier and Eric's like, don't you dare take Charles's form. He deserves better than that. And we get this kind of discussion about how for there to be light, there must always be dark. And the fact is, you can't really accept the dark places in Charles because you can't really accept the dark places in yourself. So then the Shadow King then kind of transforms himself into the original incarnation of Magneto that we meet in X-Men number one, who's, you know, trying to take over the world. And really, Magneto's whole mantra is, is like, I don't live there no more, right? Like, I get it that, like, you're trying to do, but, you know... I'm not really lived there no more. So meanwhile, Storm is fighting an iteration of what's called the First Fallen. So the First Fallen is the opposite of the Phoenix Force, whereas Phoenix is death and rebirth. The First Fallen is stagnation. And one of the things it tries to do, that the Shadow King is trying to do, is let Storm be in case and who people expect her to be. There's a fantastic, you know, spread of her and kind of like her original Storm outfit, you know, with the hair and the little thing, you know. And she's like, I will not be trapped and in case by who you expect me to be. And that's really a shout out to, I think, a lot of fans who are kind of always very critical, expecting Storm to be something, you know, that, you know, with her earlier iterations and are very hesitant or very reticent to allow her to evolve as a character. But, the, you know, they're standing for Wanda, they're standing for Jean, they're standing for Emma, but we don't really see some of the girls stand for Storm the way they stand for some of the other female characters, right? So I really think that that was Al Ewing's way of just being like, I see you, I see you, I see you, right? So anyway... Storm then, you know, Magneto is like battling his manifestations and this and this original iteration of herself is really spitting out and regurgitating a lot of his like pro like mutant homo superior rhetoric. And Magneto's like, I'm not going to feel bad about that, right? Like at the, at the end of the day, we are superior. We are better. Did I need to kill all those people? Did I need to go attack an army base? 
Probably not. Should I have really been more receptive to Charles talking about a dream? Probably so. And do I have room to change and be a better person? Absolutely. So then he just looks at him and was like, look, I see you. You're a part of me. I will not deny you. But I ain't gonna feel sorry or bad for you for what I did because that's who I was. It's not who I am now, right? And that, of course, is the most heightened kind of high emotionally intelligent, you know, presence you could be with your past is that you don't live in a place of regret. You don't live in a place of feeling sorry for yourself or indictment. You say, you know what? That's who I was now. I could now make a better choice, right? As my usual says, if you know better, do better. Make a different choice, right? And it's the same kind of thing. So the Shadow King presents the same binary choice to, to Storm. It's like, look, we can either fight back and forth because I'm the iteration of dark and you're the light, or you can accept the fact that darkness exists in everyone and you can give up. So then basically Storm is like, it's not really a binary choice between fighting or giving up, but accepting the fact that I don't have to fight this alone. So then she reaches out her hand, she grabs Eric, and then they're pretty much, so then they do the human circuit thing, right? So then they do the human circuit where like she channels Eric's, you know, powers and channels, you know, whatever, it's a Shadow King, he dissipates. Let's pause here. How did Shadow King end up in another realm anyway? Wasn't he walking around looking like a Shriner when we was back on Krakoa, like harassing the new mutants? Like I didn't read the new mutants close enough to figure out because I remember the Shadow King was like the lead villain in that book. But I was like, how did he end up being there? Wasn't he at the Hellfire Gala, the Hellfire Gala? Like I, anybody who read that book, drop down in the comments and let me know how the Shadow King ended up here in this nether world or whatever like that, right? Anyway, so now the storm is connected to the circuit with Eric, but of course it caused her to go cardiac arrest because remember her body is with Lumarvo at his base, right? So then Eric sees that Storm is dying and he's like, so now he, now he's standing up, you know, his ball sack is full and he's like, I am power, I am this, I am that, and you ain't gonna die, come through me. So then Storm comes back alive, is back alive, in Blue Marvel, and then we see skeleton, we see muscles, we see tissue, we see nerve, and we see a naked ass Eric standing there being like, who they like, who's coming through the portal? The fuck you mean who's coming through the portal? The whole per the person she went to go get. He's like, I'm Magneto. I have to say, that was that surfed cunt. That was perfect. They drew that all with a nice placement, you know, power displacement or whatever. So I was just like, okay, fantastic. I mean... I have to say, again, a very good, solid issue. I think it could have ended there. I don't think we needed a fourth issue. I think we got enough kind of journey, travel, evolution, redemption, sorrow, pity from the entire series up until these first three books. I thought they were incredibly drawn. I thought the stories were magnificent. It's kind of like that Seinfeld kind of thing of knowing when to go out on top, right? And I feel like if they had just stopped at this issue, they would have been perfect and gone out on top, right? But once again, capitalistic comic books, this is what happens. So drop down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Are you reading it? What you thought? And I'll, talk, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos.